The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Helen Keller Located in downtown Pittsburgh, the Joseph Horn Company was started by Joseph Horn in 1849 at 63 Market Street. The department store started as any other store but later on grew to be a large corporation in the greater Pittsburgh area with over 16 branches in different parts of Pennsylvania and West Virginia. When plans of a new store came around, things started to spring into action. The company's greatest dream was realized in a decade, although Joseph Horn, who made the plans, did not live to see it accomplished. In 1893, they moved into their fine new building on Penn Avenue and 5th Street, now known as Stanwick Street, the first three buildings which now make up their store. What makes Horn so unique is that they were the first department store in Pittsburgh to establish an employee's cafeteria, to provide a visiting nurse and medical attention for employees' discounts, um, to provide paid vacations and pay for legal holidays, and to even make the first and, first and one half day week available. Also, as a result, Horns was even the first Pittsburgh store to provide a formal pension plan for employees with five years of service or more and to provide group life insurance. And for a while, they were the only store who offered it. Now history starts to take a role when Horns became the first radio advertisers on KDKA. When different companies bid for something so desired, it can go to extraordinary lengths. By a long run, Horns ended up winning. The store asked KDKA if a piece of the original antenna pool could be attained for such a purpose. A small section was found and supplied the Horns together with a letter of authentication from Dr. Frank Conrad, Westinghouse Assistant Chief Engineer, who used the pool in his early experiments which led to the founding of KDKA. To play a big role, the store also had printed and distributed at the association's meeting a booklet entitled How Radio Broadcasting Began. During its early years, radio was mainly targeted to high school students since they used the radio the most compared to the other age groups. By targeting the students, Horns was able to make advertisements to get more customers to as many different store locations. Now the early 1900s, saw many devastations, including the Great Floods of 1907 and 1936. The company went through many different changes throughout its time. What seemed to be the biggest challenge was the Great Flood of 1936. Now this flood was so high that a lot of stores went out of business because of the amount of damage due to the amount of water that filled downtown Pittsburgh. On March 17, 1936, the rivers in Pittsburgh rose to a 46.4 feet stage, the highest in history.
I remember I played a lot in the creek down there, and uh, we used to catch crayfish. And uh, we went swimming. I took swimming lessons in the pool, but I didn't care for it too much. And we had a lot of picnics, and um, on the 4th of July, they had fireworks, and they had games. They had three-legged races and all kind of games that they, they played. And um, it's been a long time since <laughs> I've been down here to remember all this. Well, the camp played a big part in our growing up because we lived on Plummer Avenue and we could walk to the camp. And we came in, what's the back entrance now? But I guess at one point that was the primary entrance before they could come in off of Camp Horn Road. So I probably first came here when I was seven or eight years old. And I was born in 1940, so that would have been about 1947, 1948. And probably until I was, oh, close to 18, which would have been 1958, uh, we came here regularly. And the camp was open on Sundays and also on holidays. Now, theoretically, we shouldn't have been here because we weren't uh, Horn's employees and we weren't uh, children of Horn's employees. And so we were re really not supposed to be here. It's just a beautiful setting. It's, it's, it's incredible. I was worried that when Horns put the property up for sale that uh, some developer would buy it and just chop it up into single family homes. And then you would have lost all the natural features because it's fantastic. It has the creek. Uh, the grounds really haven't been altered hardly at all since we came here, which would be 60 years, 65 years ago now, close to 70. The camp was bought out by five municipalities in the 1960s. The municipalities included are Ben Avon Borough, Ben Avon Heights Borough, Ensworth Borough, and also the townships of Kilbuck in Ohio. Now, Avonworth Community Park, or as other natives call it, Acord, um, is unique to the Pittsburgh region in that it was once the Horn family campground and also the summer retreat area. Remnants of the park's early days can still be founded. What makes the park so unique is that it is jointly owned by five municipalities that make up the Avonworth community. The municipalities in the joint ownership include Benavon Borough, Benavon Heights Borough, Emsworth Borough, Kilbuck and Ohio Townships. In 1966, they formed um, the Avonworth Municipal Authority. In 1968, the park was dedicated and given the name ACORD, which stands for Avonworth Community Organization for Recreational Development. Several of these buildings have the potential to be nominated to the National Register of Historic Places and restored to restored due to their uniqueness in the place in the region's history.